Welcome if you're watching us online as well. Today is a very special day for us because it is St. Mark's Day, so it's our patronal festival. It's the feast day of St. Mark. I hope you've all got a copy of our service, and we're going to start on page one. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Go out to the whole world and preach the gospel to all creatures. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So let's join together in the prayer at the bottom of page one. Loving Lord, fill us with your life-giving, joy-giving, peace-giving presence that we may praise you now with our lips and all the day long with our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we come to the prayers of penitence. We are God's chosen people, yet often we stumble as sinners rather than walk as saints. Jesus Christ has lived among us and knows our frailties. Let us ask for his forgiveness. When we are so preoccupied with present worries that we lose sight of our future hope, Lord, forgive us. When we so promote ourselves that we neglect the leads, the needs of others, Lord, forgive us. When we are so proud of our own resources that we forget our dependence on God the giver, Lord, forgive us. So may we know that forgiveness of God in our lives. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we're going to stand to say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And at the bottom of page three, we're going to say together the collect for St. Mark's Day. Almighty God, who enlivened your holy church through the inspired witness of your evangelist, St. Mark, grant that we, being firmly grounded in the truth of the gospel, may be faithful to its teaching, both in word and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit for our first Bible reading. The first reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 to 16. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gifts. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean? but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is the same one who ascended far above the, all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the state saints for the work of ministry 
for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knitted together by every ligament with which it is equipped, and as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please stand for the Gospel reading. The Gospel reading is taken from Mark chapter 13, verses 5 to 13. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead me astray. When you hear of wars and rumours of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. As for yourselves, beware, for they will hand you over to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them. And the good news must first be proclaimed to all nations. When they bring you to trial and hand you over, do not worry beforehand about what you are to say, but say whatever is given to you at that time, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. But one who endures to the end will be saved. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. May I speak in the name of living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do sit down. Aren't church notices wonderful? I'm sure that you've heard about the church notice, which read, at the evening service tonight, the sermon topic will be, what is hell? Come early and listen to our choir practice. <laughs> or a notice outside a church, don't let worry kill you, let the church help. <laughs> well, we laugh and maybe there's an element of truth. We often see the church as a figure of fun, don't we? Often television vicars and congregations are targets of ridicule, absurdness, and we can sometimes recognize caricatures in our own churches. Maybe we feel the church today is a far cry from the kind of body of Christ that St. Paul talks about in Ephesians. Sadly, so often in churches we fall out and there are divisions and differences within the local church and of course the wider church. There was a man who was stranded all along alone on a deserted island who was rescued. His rescuer asked him what the three structures were that he'd built on the island. The three buildings seemed perplexing as there was just one man he said one was his house, one was his church, and one was where he used to go to church before he got his feelings hurt. <laughs> How many people do you know who've been hurt by the attitude of people within a church? I should imagine we all know at least one person. Unfortunately, for many people, that's the last time 
they've been in a church. St. Paul knew any church is going to encounter problems in their relationships. In fact, his letters are full of advice to churches about how to deal with their internal problems. That's reading is chosen for our saints' day today, maybe because Barnabas and Paul themselves had a big fallout over Mark, who also happened to be Barnabas's cousin. Paul refused to take Mark on his next missionary journey because Mark had dropped out unexpectedly of a previous evangelistic mission. Mark's desertion was something that Paul found difficult to understand or to forgive. However, however, after a kind of cooling off period, they did come back together again. In his letters to the Christians in Colossae, Paul refers to Mark as one of his fellow workers and that Mark is a great comfort to him. So the two obviously patched up their differences. As Christians, we've got so much in common. Why is it so often it's the differences that we focus on rather than what we have in common? We all share one faith. Snowflake is one of nature's most fragile things, but just look at what they can do when they all stick together. Each snowflake is in fact totally unique. No two snowflakes are the same. So it's possible to have unity, but variety within that unity. We're not all the same, are we? Just look around this morning. We've all been given different gifts. And as Christians, we need to discover what our particular calling is. What are our gifts? So many arguments in churches are because maybe we feel jealous of others and their gifts or feel we aren't able to exercise our own gifts. But these gifts are not meant to be divisive. They're meant to build up the body of Christ, the church. Paul uses the analogy of a body. We need all the different parts of the body for our body to function effectively. And we know the parts of our body are interconnected. We know often that when we're ill, it's a sign something is not working in part of our body. In the same way, we need each other. I read a story recently about Jimmy Durante. You may remember him. He was asked to do a show for World War II veterans. He told them he was very busy, but if they wouldn't mind him doing one short monologue and immediately leaving for the next appointment, well, he'd come. They agreed, but when Jimmy got on stage, he went through the short monologue, and then he stayed, and he stayed. Soon he'd been on stage 15, 20, then 30 minutes. Finally, he took a last bow and left. Backstage, someone stopped and said, I thought you said you were going after a few minutes. What happened? Jimmy answered, you can see for yourself if you look in the front row. In the front row were two veterans, each of whom had lost an arm in the war. One had lost his right arm and the other had lost his left. But together they could clap and that's exactly what they'd been doing loudly and cheerfully all the time Jimmy had been speaking. So in church we should be cooperating and working together. We need each other because we need the gifts we each bring. No one person has all the gifts. Some of you have musical gifts, some gifts of administration, hospitality, teaching, artistic gifts. As you can see behind me, and later on Caroline will give you an explanation of our new banner, we can all use the gifts we've been given to serve God. We're meant to be encouraging one another. Sadly, encouragement is often lacking. How often do you encourage someone else? Isn't it true that a negative comment can somehow outweigh nine positive ones? But it's when we're encouraging one another and supporting them and showing God's love that there can be real growth within a church. The Paraguayan women make beautiful Nanduti lace. It's made up of different designs, each with its own particular pattern. And they're skillfully joined together to form a whole. 
There are no divisions, no joins, just beauty and loveliness. That lace reminds us of God's will that there should be unity in the church. We're all different, but we're all made in God's image. Now, unity doesn't just happen. It has to be worked at. Many outside the church are put off by seeing the arguing and divisions within the church today. It's a fact that this unity harms our mission and evangelism. I wonder if you ever remember putting your face in a headless frame, painted perhaps to represent a muscle man or a clown or a bathing beauty. You often used to see them at the beach. Some of us might have had pictures taken this way. And the pictures are quite funny because the head doesn't really fit the body. If we could picture Christ as the head of our local body of believers, would the world laugh at the misfit? Or would they stand in awe of a human body so closely related to divine head? Once a church had fallen upon hard times, only five members were left, the pastor, and four others, all over 60. In the mountains near the church lived a retired bishop, and it occurred to the pastor to ask the bishop if he could offer any advice that might save the church. The pastor and the bishop spoke at some length, but when asked for advice, the bishop simply responded by saying, I have no advice to give. The only thing I can tell you is that the Messiah is one of you. The pastor returned to the church and he told the church members what the bishop had said. In the months that followed, the old church members pondered the words of the bishop. The Messiah's one of us, they asked each other. As they thought about this possibility, they began to treat each other with extraordinary respect on the off chance that one among them might actually be the Messiah. And on the off chance that each member himself could be the Messiah, they decided to treat themselves with extraordinary care. As time went by, people visiting the church noticed that there this aura of respect and gentle kindness that surrounded the five old members of the small church. Hardly knowing why, more people began to come to the church. They began to bring their friends, and their friends brought more friends. Within a few years, that small church had once again become a thriving church, thanks to the bishop's gift. When we treat others in the right way, those in the world find the church to be attractive, even compelling. I think that's a challenge for each one of us as we go into this week. Amen. That is an extraordinary challenge for each one of us. How can each of us build up the body of Christ? So let's stand to declare our faith in God in the words of the creed, which you will find at the bottom of page four. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit for our prayers of intercession, which will be led for us by Caroline.
Let us bring to our Heavenly Father our concerns for the church, the world, and for ourselves. This week's focus for prayer will be St. Mungo's Charity for the Homeless and the Dartford Deanery. Lord, we thank you for our patron, the evangelist St. Mark, and for his gospel stories. His written word is a clear guidance to us, helping to show us the true way. His words about you show us how to be respectful, loving, and peaceful. And by following his example, may we continue to spread the word. Please be with us in all we do, so that we make choices that honour you. We ask this in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we, re we remember all who are called to share in the shepherding of your people, particularly those in the world where they are under attack or are threatened. We pray for our leaders here who serve us as they continue to work towards a new normality. We thank you for all in our church family who serve you in small and quiet ways. For those who use their particular gifts, either in paid work, church life, or in their families. For all these people, we give thanks for their dedication and wisdom and ask you to give them strength so that each may bring you honor through their actions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, we pray for our troubled world, for countries with areas of deepening conflict, for those fleeing for their lives, or for whatever reason must remain in war zones, for those struggling with drought or lack of clean fresh water. We pray especially this week for those who died, and for the families and friends of those who died in the Indonesian submarine tragedy. Coming to terms with such a terrible occurrence needs your strength and power to get them through the darkness. We pray too for the people of India, struggling to cope with the increasing demands of COVID, lack of adequate health care, and supply of oxygen. May all charity and relief workers, peacemakers, medical and rescue staff know of your love and protection and show us ways where we can help bring about urgent action where there is a need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, in a week where Earth Day was marked, we marvel that you placed the Earth in its perfect position amongst the planets and stars in the universe, that we are at the right distance to benefit from the sun. The conditions are perfect for life. We are in awe of your creation and appreciate its purpose and beauty, using all of our senses to feel, see, hear, smell and taste. As the world wakes up to the enormity of our task, to act now to preserve your work, give us all a sense of urgency and willingness to play our part, however small, for the good of all mankind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for those who have lost their way, for those who are, as yet, unaware of your love for them for those influenced by the temptations of the world, choosing their own path. Lord, we recognize that too often we stray from the straight path of faith and wander into darkness. Help all of us to be led safely back into the fold where there is life in all its fullness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for those whose lives are burdened with poverty or uncertainty about the future beyond the pandemic, for those without homes and without sufficient food, people who find themselves sleeping rough, for the vulnerable and those with poor mental health. Strengthen those who offer compassionate care, the carers and counsellors, 
for all who are looking after the welfare of others, for all who seek out and befriend the needy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, with the grace of your Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow, need, sickness, or adversity. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. We remember those throughout the world who suffer persecution for their faith. May they draw strength from your word and example. From our pew sheet, we pray for Beverly, Lynn, Doreen, Sheila, Claire, Brenda, Chris, Brian, David, Singh, Trish, Kelly, Donna, Denike, Tony, Stan, and Bill. And we pray for the long-term sick, for baby Roman, Sheila, Sophia, for Pam, Natasha, Neil, Viv, Linda, Clive, Richard, Michael, and Stella. And we pray also for the elderly and the housebound, including Rose, Yvonne, Mavis, Barbara, Tricia, and Terry. Let them not be alone. Be with them always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, give consolation to those in sorrow or mourning, and as you take them into your tender care, may they be strengthened by the power of your love. May they remember all the good times, the happy times, and the loving times they shared with those who have passed on, that their sadness and sorrow may be lightened. We continue to pray for the Queen and her family as they come to terms with the passing of Prince Philip. Their lives will change as do all lives when a loved one dies. In a moment of quiet, we bring to God anyone known to us who is in particular need of healing and peace. From our Book of Remembrance this week, we pray for Elizabeth Armson, May Snowden, David Bennett, Arthur Pottle, Peter Gibbs, and James Marshall. We pray especially this week for the family and friends of Josephine Maxfield, Roger Douse, and Kim Cook. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we go out into this new week, we rejoice that Jesus is the name above all names and that he calls each one of us by name. With that knowledge, whatever circumstances we are facing, enable us to carry out your ministry, reaching out to others in love and respect. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the peace. May the God of peace sanctify you. May he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before him at the coming of our Lord Jesus with his saints. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So we offer one another our virtual peace. Please do sit down. Still for the press. 
to the uh, responses, then our singing group is going to sing the responses for us this morning. So our service continues on page six. To you we come, Father of lights, with angels and saints where heaven and earth unite. May Jesus meet us in the breaking of the bread. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising has set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is. how tempting it is to join in. Singing is not allowed in church, even with a mask on. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpour may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lord. Worthy is the Lord God Almighty. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lord. Worthy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is. 
help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St Mark and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord, glory to the Lord God Almighty. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord, glory to the Lord God Almighty. the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Our service continues on page 11. O oh Lord God, the source of truth and love, keep us faithful to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, united in prayer and the breaking of bread, and one in joy and simplicity of heart, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Just um, a few notices. First of all, a message from Roy, Adam and Jason Cook. We'd like to say thank you for all the support, cards, messages and prayers that they've received. They really do appreciate it. Uh, Kim's funeral will be in church on Friday the 21st of May, but numbers, as you know, are limited to 30. So you would need to receive a personal invite from them um, to come to that service. And I don't think numbers are likely to change, but who knows, guidance can change every week sometimes. Caroline is just going to quickly tell you about this wonderful new banner that we've got. I'm sure you've been admiring it during the service. Um, people have said to me, oh, did you do this on your own? Absolutely not, no. Um, I asked uh, members of the congregation um, if they would be interested in creating and uh, making a brick design that would symbolise uh, the various things which they feel strongly about is the foundation and the building of the church since the beginning. And so the only thing that I asked was that they would use a particular piece of material as their brick background so that we would have some co cohesion. Um, I gave some people advice about how to do various things, but everybody came up with their own ideas, their own designs, their own ways of doing it. So if we start at the top. Um, the hands, there are two bricks with hands on. These were from Chris Walker, and the two hands at the top are her hand and Neil's hand. And the other one, with all the little hands on, I'm sure you can guess, uh, made from the hands of her grandchildren. So uh, that sort of symbolizes family in our church and the importance of you know, children and of adults and those who guide. And then on the right-hand side at the top, that's from Roz. Uh, that's Rihanna's mum. And uh, she, she, <laughs> Rihanna is um, a, a fabrics textiles uh, student. She's taking that at her GCSE. And um, Roz was going to ask Rihanna to do it. And in the end, Roz said, you know what? I'm going to do it. And so um, she, she really battled with this, but she loved doing it. So there you can see this is the beginning of the world, the, cre the creation. And the next one down the left, that's Amanda. Well, I mean, I don't think I need to explain why Amanda has um, put musical notes in there. Um, nothing else to explain, is there, Amanda? And on the next one, there's Stephanie. And Stephanie wanted to do this because it's the Jerusalem cross. And she remembers when we went on our trip to the Holy Land uh, with Alison as a group, and it was amazing. So that's one of the sort of first, the early symbols. Um, and our bottom, uh, underneath Amanda's, that's Sarah, Sarah Scott. And uh, she wanted to do something to do with sort of creation and tree and uh, life. And again, she's, she's very good at quilting, very good at quilting. She said, I've never done this before, but uh, look what she's produced. Everybody has been amazing. And then you can see Chris's little hands there. Um, underneath Chris's, you can see our celebration cross, which we, of course we got out today. And that was Judy, Judy Sharp. And again, uh, Judy got some advice from her sister who does um, uh, embroidery for churches. And uh, she, she struggled with that as well. But uh, no, she overcame everything. It was amazing. It was really good. Very effective, I think. It does look like our celebration cross. And again, Stephanie did another one. And uh, that says what it says, doesn't it? It's St. Mark. It's our moving church. Underneath there is Dorothy, Dorothy Starks. She wanted to do the Tree of Life. Um, she tried various different uh, patterns, but she came up with this one. You can't see it from mostly from where you are, but if you come and have a look at some point, it's very intricate, very detailed, very delicate. And the last one is me. <laughs> so all of those uh, were given to me, and I had the lovely job of trying to put them together to make some sort of cohesion. 
and technically to work out a way that I could attach it all without it looking terrible. So it was a real challenge for all of us, but I think it is beautiful, and I thank all those who have been a part of it, and uh, it just shows, as Alison was talking about, how individual people, we all come together to make one church. So I, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. It certainly is beautiful, isn't it? So thank you to all of you who have put so much time and effort into it. I'm glad Caroline didn't ask me to do one because she knows that, well, it's not, not my gift at all. So it just shows we've all got different gifts, haven't we? And we have to find out what our particular gifts are. Now, we've got our AGM coming up, and it's going to be on the uh, 9th of May, two weeks today. But because of all the various rules about COVID, etc., if you want to come to that meeting, the annual meeting, it will take place immediately after the service. And uh, it's not a way of getting extra people to the service, but unless you come to the service, you cannot come to that meeting. We can't have people coming in and out and sitting where other people have sat. So if you're in here for the service, you don't have to stay for the AGM. You can go out but we're not going to be having new people coming in. And uh, that's when the wardens come into their own, you see, because they can bar people from coming into a church. They'll have to get their wands out and stand there like the heavies and stop people coming in on that day. Now, you can see there are a few vacancies. Very pleased to say that Jerry and Caroline are willing to stand as wardens for another year. And I didn't have to twist their arm too much Jerry's now staring at me, although he did wonder why his name was on the rotor still, but we passed that over by saying we had to put someone's name on it. Anyway, so they're willing to stand, and uh, we've also got four vacancies for PCC, and Andrew's kindly said he'll stand, and I know that um, Stephanie and Pat are restanding, so we've got one vacancy, and uh, we have got a vacancy for deanery, but I've already had someone who's offered to fill that. So really, there's one vacancy at the moment outstanding for PCC. We do have to have nominations in advance. No use turning up on the day and deciding you're going to be uh, standing. So you can read all the information here on uh, your pew sheet. Take it home with you. You can see who's on. We've got Lynn behind me, who's the electoral roll officer. I think everybody here is on the electoral roll. If you're not and you'd like to join, it's just a simple form. And if you fill it in at the back today, then Lynn can take it home and she can add you to the uh, roll as of now. As you were coming in, I didn't catch everybody, but I've got some little booklets from uh, Thy Kingdom Come and it's prayers, reflections for each day from Ascension Day to Pentecost. So it's one between uh, a family. If you haven't got one already, there are some at the back that you can pick up. And just to let you know that we're not going to be live streaming the main service next week. Next week's All Age at 10.30. There will be no live streaming services. It is a bit of a constraint when we live stream, and there's lots of stuff that we can't use because it goes onto the internet, and some of it is copyright. So it gives a little bit more freedom and flexibility. So in future, all age services, the first in the month, will not be live streamed, and the first service in the month also will be 8 o'clock communion. There'll be one 8 o'clock service in future per month, and that's the first Sunday in the month when we have 10.30 all-age worship. So um, I hope that's clear that next Sunday there will be an 8 o'clock. I think that's uh, all our notices for now. I'd like to thank the uh, singers as well for the lovely singing today and for leading us in the Eucharistic prayer. I know it's hard not being able to sing. I haven't been able to sing for a long time either, so I'm with everybody else but still no movement on that one as far as I gather, singing in church. And I don't really care what your view is on that, and I don't really want to listen to what your view on that is because I get a bit fed up with people giving their views to me, unsolicited. Um, well, I have to abide by the rules. Let's just abide by the rules and keep everybody safe. Okay? May Christ, who makes saints of sinners, who's transformed those we remember today, raise and strengthen you that you may transform the world. And the blessing of God Almighty,
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all those you love, living and departed, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>